You know, it seems as if batteries, but more specifically, lithium ion rechargeable batteries are everywhere, in our pockets, on our wrists, in our ears, possibly in our bodies. They power our devices, our toys, power equipment, buildings, vehicles, and soon our cities. The problem is, is that batteries are rather complex and proprietary, and sometimes they fail in very dramatic ways. Good morning, my name is Dr. Tom Chapin. I'm a, uh, I'm a uh, material scientist, and for 40 years, I've explored the issues of technology and how things work and how they break. I'm fascinated with things that burn and ignite and explode, so I have the best job in the world. So from this research in, in, uh, at UL and expl exploring the boundaries of safety, we generate new knowledge. And this knowledge is exceptionally valuable because we want to freely share this information with the world, with our stakeholders, to build a, a safer world. So in order to talk about this story of batteries, I want to talk to you a little bit about something really scary, electrochemistry. Now this is both electrical and chemicals combined into one. And in these two illustrations you see here, what we're looking at is a tiny little cross section of a cell. We're, going, we're shrinking ourselves down into you know, this area. And by the way, this is probably the most complicated slide that I have on science, so don't worry about that. But anyways, what a battery is made of is an anode and a cathode, a separator, and an electrolyte. Now, the electrolyte is very important because in the case of lithium-ion technology, it's flammable. So what happens, and, and by the way, this is very much related to what you do every day, is in charging your device, what you do is the lithium is pushed with the electrons over to the anode. It's storing it as chemical energy prepared for use. So what happens when you turn on your device, the lithium then moves back to the, to the cathode. And this process of what we call lithium shuttle back and forth thousands of times, you know, allows us to power our devices. However, sometimes things go wrong. It creates a short circuit and all of that stored energy is released all of a sudden. It re results in a temperature rise to 1,000 degrees, bursts the cell, the electrolyte is released, you have arcing and you have fire. More about that in just a moment, so stay tuned. So let's talk about the risks associated with this technology. Well, in general, the risk is the product of the hazard times the probability. Quite frankly, the hazard is the severity. How big is the boom? Secondly is probability, that it's just frequency. So what we do at UL as safety detectives is that we understand patterns of incidents. And from those patterns, we can start to study, why did this happen? How can we unravel this so that we can prevent it from happening in the future? And sharing that knowledge as I'm doing this morning. To give you an example in statistics, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has issued over 110 recalls on defective battery products totaling and recalling 21 million units. I'm talking about things that we can relate to. PCs, laptops, hoverboards, power banks, toy helicopters, torches, lamps, electronic uh, stereo speakers, all of these are battery related. So you can see that's, that's promoted uh, the concern of, uh, of safety. But at a more, uh, I say, relevant issue to, uh, to the urban environment is just last month uh, in Arizona, a stationary energy system uh, had a fire and an explosion. Uh, in, the, in the country of South Korea, which is going to put in 840 megawatts of stored energy, just last year alone they had 21 fires and explosions in their facilities. And the headline in the article that I read is, we don't under, understand enough about battery technology. These are large and complex systems. So what I'd like to do now is um, make this real. I'm going to show you a video in just a second, and the video is rather quick, so bear with me. So here's the scenario. 
It's a quiet afternoon in a Singapore high-rise, and a father is charging his e-bike, and um, something goes wrong. So cue the video, please. The father unplugs the charger, internal short circuit, thermal runaway. That's what happens when a battery pack releases all of this stored energy all of a sudden. And you might say, well, you know, that wouldn't happen to me. I would say that this, this happens more than we would like, and it could happen anywhere at any time. What you're seeing here in this picture is what the debris looks like from a, a, from a battery pack. And what you see here is individual cells that compose the, the battery. So the, 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 ba the basic building block of, of any battery is the cell. These are cylindrical cells. When a cell goes into thermal runaway, it can propagate that energy from cell to cell. So for example, if you have an e-cigarette, you'll have you'll have a failure which is highly localized and it's, I'm sad to say that even people who have been vaping have been actually killed vaping because of the destruction of, of the cell. So, you know, this is serious, but you can imagine as you go up to larger and larger cell arrangements, the, the risk becomes higher because the hazard is higher. So let's talk about trends and the future for all of you to consider. Now, if you study the there we go. If you study the trends in demand for lithium, because I have been focused on lithium ion technology, which is really the premier, uh, what I'd say premier chemistry, is that on the brown band on the bottom is what I'd say non-battery demand for lithium. But as you go up and you see the yellow band is for, uh, for battery construction. After that, you can see e-bikes and notice that they're growing because of the great popularity of these e-bikes and small devices, then electric vehicles, and then stationary energy storage. What we're talking about is kilotons of lithium that's, going, that's, that's feeding this voracious appetite that all of us have for uh, stored energy. Now, what they do is convert this energy into battery manufacturing, and that is the, the, the right-hand illustration. And what you're seeing is a, from a period of 10 years, from 2018, to 2028 is a 400% increase in the investment and manufacturing of cells in the United States, Europe, Asia, and China. So by 2028, there is going to be one terawatt hour worth of battery manufacturing capacity. Now, this is of cells of various formats, and there's different kinds. There's cylindrical, and there's pouch and prismatic so on. But think of it as, as the raw material for people to invent new and interesting things for, for our daily lives. Mobility, electronics, entertainment, and stationary energy storage. What that's going to do is it's going to stress the entire supply chain from manufacturing, transportation, distribution, warehousing, and use. So this, this kind of information is exceptionally, exceptionally valuable for city planners uh, in general. So let's make this even more personal. So on, likely if you haven't driven, and it, maybe you've driven an electric vehicle, but if you, drove, if you flew on a plane to get here, it's likely that plane has about 500 batteries because of all the things that people are bringing on board. And the airlines are concerned about this, by the way. And they're seeing about an incident every four days things that happen during charging the device, or you recline the seat, you crush the device, things like that. Catches fire. In a typical Tesla vehicle, you have 7,600 cells in a 900-pound battery pack that's sort of under your seat. Uh, and by the way, I commend the automakers for doing a great job in looking at battery technology and battery management systems. But in fact, that, these are the vehicles that will be on the road. Here within this room, we roughly estimate about 2,000 cells and batteries are here. Now, when we get to the stationary energy storage, you're talking about millions of cells that have to power buildings and cities. An important part that's not highly uh, 
uh, highlighted about and appreciate, and I think for all of you focused on the urban environment, is end of life. Please keep in mind, all of this, these devices will end up being discarded. The question is, what are we going to do with it? Are we simply going to throw it away? Are we going to try to recover that precious natural resource, or are we going to repurpose it? Now, for larger assets like battery packs and cars, the 900-pound battery I was talking about, uh, automakers are doing a great job of taking the battery out of the car st uh, from stationary, stacking it up uh, in, a, or in a stationary application to power buildings. The tricky part that everyone needs to realize is, what was the unique circumstance of that battery? How did people drive it? Did they have an accident and so on? And so each battery thus becomes a little unique. Does it have a potential defect that could lead to a fire like I've shown you? So it's very important to look at the, the responsibility that we have of this tsunami of cells that are going to go into battery technology. So how do we pull this all together? In our world at UL, we are extremely focused on, on research that leads to standards. Again, I, I dwell on the boundary of safety. What we do is take this knowledge and we develop new standards. Standards allow us to evaluate uh, these products and technologies, uh, looking at test requirements and setting this up. Standards represent an international norm for communication. It facilitates trade and commerce. It promotes innovation. These are performance-based standards. We never define how that battery technology is made. We simply evaluate the boundary of safety. So what do we do? We educate, we inform, we collaborate with city planners like yourselves. We have to look at sustainability. So in conclusion, I would simply say battery technology is complex, uh, it, and yet in the pipeline there's a lot of safety, uh, uh, safer products, uh, designs that are being made, and so we are evaluating those, and stay tuned. Thank you very much.